Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking about triangle congruence for angle side angle and angle angle side. In my previous lesson, we talked about side 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 and side angle side congruence, and now we're looking at the other two, angle side angle and angle angle side. So let's take a look. So angle side angle is gonna be one of those theorems we can use to prove that two triangles are congruent without having to match up every single angle and every single side. And so this is what it looks like. It says triangles can be proven congruent. Let me just move my screen over. Triangles can be proven congruent when two angles. So I'm going to say, let's say angle A is congruent to angle E. Okay. So two angles and the included side. Now in the previous lesson, we learned about the included angle. The included angle was the angle that was created by the two sides that were marked congruent. So now the included side would be the side that is in between the two angles that are congruent. So you have angle, side, angle. Notice the side is directly in between those two angles, okay? It's not outside of it. It's not somewhere else. It couldn't be this side. It couldn't be this side. This is the only side that is directly in between the two angles that are marked congruent. Um, and when I have that, I can then make my triangle congruent statement. I can say triangle A, B, C, I know the drawing I'm doing right now is terrible, is congruent to triangle. Now A matches up with E, so I have to make sure it's E, F, D. So by angle, side, angle, I can prove that two triangles are congruent. Let's take a look at a few proofs. All right, so I'm just going to move myself down here so I'm not in the way. All right, so this one says here, um, we're given this information, side AD is parallel to side BC, and BCD, let me mark this up, angle BCD is congruent to angle ABD. Oh, why did I mark that one wrong? My mistake. Teachers make mistakes too. My apologies. BDC is congruent to ABD. All right, so the only information we're given is that one pair of angles is marked um, as congruent. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Now, we are given the fact that we've got these parallel lines here. So that should be a big indicator to you. Hey, you know what? If I have parallel lines, then think about what other special relationship happens. If BD is that transversal and these two sides, the vertical sides are parallel, then that would mean that these two angles are congruent to each other. And hopefully re we remember why. They are congruent to each other because they are alternate interior angles. So by the alternate interior angles theorem, I can say that those two angles are congruent. Now we should also notice, I know nothing about the sides that are parallel. I know nothing about AB and DC, but notice these two triangles do share a common side, side DB. So then I would wanna say, well, segment DB is congruent to segment DB, and we should remember that is our reflexive property. And now I've got angle side angle angle side angle and by that triangle congruence theorem i can say that the two the two triangles are congruent let's take a look over here to the right so here it says that angle e is congruent to angle h and it says j is the midpoint of eh so right away, we should remember um, in our previous proofs, hey, if you are told there's a midpoint, then we can say that segment EJ is congruent to segment HJ because those are, um, that is just your definition of a midpoint or midpoint theorem, whatever you want to call it. And now I don't know anything about any of the other sides. I don't have parallel lines, but we do have another pair of special angles here that we should recognize. We should see that because this looks like a bow tie, that we've got a pair, a pair here of vertical angles. So I would be able to say that angle EJG is congruent to angle HJF by the vertical angles theorem. And now notice what I have. I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. 
they all match up and therefore the two triangles are congruent to each other. Pretty good. Okay, now our next two problems here, and let me move myself up top. Okay, the next two triangles here, uh, next two proofs here, you're gonna see basically fall in line except for this last one. You see, notice all the triangles that we've been proving were congruent to each other. Um, that's what we were looking for. And this problem here, we're gonna prove that the two triangles are congruent. However, take a sneak peek at the last one we're gonna do. We're actually not proving that the triangles are congruent. We have to prove that two sides are congruent. And we're gonna get to that in a moment, but I just want you to start knowing that it's not always going to be this same process. Okay, so first of all, we are told that angle K is congruent to angle PQN, this angle here. And LQ bisects KP. So this KP here is getting bisected. So we already know what that's going to mean. Um, and then it says LQ, segment LQ is parallel to segment um, and segment NP. All right. We have to prove that this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here. So right now we've got a bisector and then we've got parallel lines. And again, some of these same properties and rules are definitely going to show up. So something that we're gonna be able to say because of our parallel lines is that angle KQL is congruent to QPN, this angle here. Now notice they're along parallel lines this horizontal line is basically the transversal. And what do you remember about the relationship of these angles? Okay, they're not alternate interior angles. They're actually corresponding angles. So we can use the corresponding angles theorem or postulate, however you want to phrase it should be okay. So now we've got two pairs of angles and now we need to use the other part of the statement. It said that LQ bisected KP. So that means if KP is bisected, then KQ is congruent to PQ or QP. And that's just the definition of a segment bisector. Remember, if you bisect a segment, it's definition of segment bisector. If you bisect an angle, it's the definition of an angle bisector. And now by angle side angle, I can say that these two triangles are definitely congruent. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. <coughs> Excuse me. So it says here that RS, segment RS, is per uh, perpendicular to segment SU. And UV is also perpendicular to SU. T is the midpoint of SU. Okay, so we have quite a few things going on. So first of all, if I have lines that are perpendicular to each other, if RS is perpendicular to U, um, SU, that means that this is a right angle. And if UV is perpendicular to SU, well, that means that is a right angle. And that's basically the first thing that we are able to say. We're able to say that, hey, RST and VUT, those angles are definitely right angles because perpendicular lines create right angles. And we've used that statement and theorem before. But what we then say after um, that they're both right angles, we can then say that, hey, well, then those angles are congruent to each other because we know this, all right angles are congruent to each other. Again, we've seen that in previous proofs and now it's coming back up. So now we have one pair of angles that is congruent. Well, we also can say that RTS, I'm gonna mark this up, RTS is congruent to VTU and we should recall exactly what kind of angles those are. That's because of our vertical angles theorem and now let's use this last part. It says T is the midpoint of SU. So SU is that horizontal. So if T is the midpoint, then ST is congruent to UT. And because it says midpoint, that's when we say it's because of the definition of midpoint. If it said, hey, there's a bisector, then that's when we would say definition of bisector. And so now here's the deal. We would go through all of this, right? to prove that the two triangles are congruent, which is what we're actually able to say. We can now say, well, okay, triangle RTS is congruent to triangle VTU, but look what we're actually trying to prove. We're actually trying to prove that RS, the little side here on the left, is congruent to VU, the little side on the right. And when you prove that 
two triangles are congruent, then the remaining corresponding angles and the remaining corresponding sides are also congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You see, whenever we prove that two triangles are congruent, then we can then prove that all of the corresponding parts of that triangle are also congruent to each other, and that is by CPCTC. We saw that in our, one of our previous lessons, and that's going to pop up here again. So be out on the look for it. So again, we always use this after we prove two triangles are congruent. If we have to match up a pair of corresponding sides or a pair of corresponding angles, that is our reason. Okay, now the last special triangle congruence theorem after side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, is now angle, angle, side. And angle, angle, side is very, very particular um, because it has to be that you've got two angles. So I'm going to mark this up. So angle, angle, and then a side. And it can't just be any side. It's got to be the side that's not included. You see, the other one was angle, side, angle, and the side had to be directly in between the angles. This one, we want it to be this side here. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Technically, we could have marked up this side too. Instead, we could have marked up AC and DE because then here it would be angle, angle, side but we can't mark the side that's in between the angles. This is our last congruence theorem. Angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. Again, again, notice that the angle is not in between, and this would be the same congruence statement we then had before. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFD. And now we're going to take a look at four more proofs, and these proofs are going to basically go hand in hand with the same kind of ideas, but now we're going to be mixing and matching. I mean, look at the proof on the left. We're proving the two triangles are congruent. Look at the proof over there on the right. Notice that it's asking us to prove two sides are congruent, which means we're going to have to prove the triangles are congruent first, and then we can say by CPCTC those corresponding sides are congruent. Okay, so let's take a look. It says here that LQ is parallel to NP, okay? KL is congruent to QN, okay? And LKQ is congruent to NQP. So our job is to prove that these two mini triangles are congruent. Um, so far we have one pair of angles and one pair of sines. Because of our parallel lines, we saw this before, we can talk about this pair of angles being congruent. Hopefully you remember from that previous proof, those are congruent to each other. And that is because of the corresponding angles theorem or postulate. And then I have enough information by angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. These two triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, next one. Angle A is congruent to angle C. And it says that AD is parallel to BC. Okay, so we have one pair of angles mar uh, marked up. Parallel lines, we should see we have a transversal here, so that's going to indicate those alternate interior angles. We should also notice that the two triangles that are created here share a common side. And that's basically going to guide our proof. So let's take a look. If I say that angle ADB, ADB, is congruent to angle CBD, okay? Remember that's because there's a transversal through those parallel lines, so that's your alternate interior angles theorem. We should notice the two triangles share a common side, so that would say, we would be able to say DB is congruent to DB. <coughs> Excuse me. And then by angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, all right, we can say that the two triangles are congruent to each other because of the angle-angle side congruence theorem. And now, since the triangles are proven to be congruent, we can now say, well, this little side on the left, AD, that's not marked up, and this little side here, CB, that's not marked up, we can say those are congruent to each other because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. 
Very good. We've got two last proofs to go. Okay, so here we are given that angle S is congruent to angle U. TR bisects angle SRU. So this is a bisector of this big angle here. Okay, so we've got angle bisector theorem that we're going to use. We should also notice that the two triangles share a side RT. Notice we're going to prove two angles are congruent. So we have to do that step. Um, we have to prove the triangles are congruent before we can say that those two angles are congruent. So let's take a look at, whoops, the fact that TR is bisecting SRU. So that would mean that angle SRT is congruent to angle URT. And remember, if an angle is getting bisected, then your reason is definition of angle bisector. Then we also know here that RT is congruent to RT. The two triangles share a common side. So by the reflexive property, which we've been using so much lately in a lot of our proofs, um, that pops up. Now by angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, I can say that these two triangles are congruent to each other. By the angle, angle, side congruence theorem. And then lastly, that would mean that RTS, this angle here, and RTU, this angle here, are definitely congruent to each other because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Last proof, angle W is congruent to angle Z. WV is perpendicular to VY and YZ is perpendicular to VY. Okay, so the fact that we're told that they're perpendicular, remember, then means that these are right angles. Okay, we saw this in a, a proof today as well. The moment you're told that there's perpendiculars, we say that they're right angles. And then because they're right angles, we say that, um, I'm sorry, because they're perpendicular lines create right angles. And then after we talk about two angles being right angles, we can then say, hey, well, they're congruent to each other because all right angles are always congruent to each other. And notice we're trying to prove that the two big triangles are congruent. Don't worry about these like little mini ones. It says WVY, WVY, this big triangle, is congruent to ZYV, this big triangle. And notice if we're trying to talk about these two triangles being congruent to each other, they actually do share a common side. They share the side of VW. I'm sorry, VY, excuse me. So if they share that side, look, it's angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So um, if, they, if VY is congruent to VY by the reflexive property, and I can say these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.